Hello and welcome back to another episode of Sustainability as a Concept podcast. My name is Sebastian and in this episode I'm having a conversation with Natalia Sanchez. Natalia is a sustainability professional with 11 years of experience leading business transformation in Europe and Latin America. She has worked alongside large and small companies, international corporation, development banks, the UN Global Compact and non-profit organizations to integrate into corporate practices the ESG strategies to respond to sustainable development needs. Natalia is the head of sustainability at Bolt. But before we start this conversation with Natalia, there's one thing that I'd like to point out. Nine out of ten people that are in the sustainability space did not start out as individuals looking for a career in the sustainability space. They had this aha moment and one thing led to another and today they are experts in the space. What does this say? Personally, I feel like the message that is being echoed is that there is enough space. Space to do more, space to collaborate, space to partner, and space to have an impact. Speaking of partnerships, Bolt is an international company. And just a few months ago, they announced one of the biggest partnerships that we've seen in the region. And this partnership is with a company from Kenya known as Seed Bowls Kenya. In this episode, I'm going to try and get behind the reason why Bolt decided to partner with Seed Bowls Kenya and what people should be looking out for, especially when they're seeking out partnerships with other institutions and individuals. All right, so for the guys who are meeting you for the first time or hearing about you for the first time, how would you introduce yourself? Well, my name is, is, is Natalia. Um, I'm the head of sustainability at Bolt. Um, I was born and raised in Madrid, uh, in Spain, but I consider myself a citizen of the world. I've had the opportunity to live in three different countries, and I really don't see myself just in a place because I care about the world. So I would say that's a good introduction on, on myself. <laughs> It is. I like the concept of being a citizen of the world because mm -hmm. then now your impact goes beyond where you were born. Yes. When it comes to the topic of sustainability, how did you first get started into it? Uh, well, I've been working in sustainability for the last 11 years. So I was working in sustainability before it was even called sustainability. I've lived the evolution from, from philanthropy with a hard link to the business to corporate social responsibility, which actually was hard to link with the environmental impacts to now sustainability that is challenging yeah. because most people think of sustainability as only environmental impacts, but it, it, it is much broader. And in fact, I started this journey because I studied uh, communications and, and uh, public relationships. And when I started working in that world in Mexico at that time, yeah. uh, I didn't felt like it was the kind of impact I want to cause in the world. So I started to study everything related to sustainability, a master's degree, um, a certificate training and executive education. So pretty much everything that was already there and uh, I've been working in this field too. Yeah, the, the one thing that is uh, turning out to be sort of a common denominator, even when I'm having conversations with the other guests, is mm -hmm. most of them did not necessarily start out in the space. They sort of had this yeah. aha moment and they were like, okay, I'm studying finance, but I've realized that I can have a lot, a lot more impact when I anchor my yes. focus and start focusing on sustainability. And if you look at it even from our lifestyle, I don't know how it is in Madrid, but in Africa, um, and I don't know if Marion will back me up on this, when we use containers, for example, ice cream containers, we don't throw them. They are plastic, but we don't think of it as sustainability. We start using them to yeah. store sugar and salt. Is it the same mm -hmm. thing over there? Not here, but... Uh, it was just the same in, in, in Mexico. Actually, I had the opportunity to visit Kenya a couple of weeks, uh, of weeks ago. And I, I, I saw there are a lot of things in common with the Latin America I have lived in. 
And uh, yes, you, you don't even think about, for example, containers or, or uh, well, in Mexico is, is yogurt they use for storing also, I don't know, uh, beans or this type of things. Yeah, yeah. But here is becoming more and more important. It's like we lost that phase. Mm. We missed the opportunity to, to, keep, to keep using um, containers and, and packaging or other stuff. To, to have a second life for those products, but now it's it's back. Yeah. And then you can go to stores and buy things unpacked, which was what was my grandmother used to <laughs> used to do when when buying things, like yeah. bringing her own containers and then just buying the stuff. Yeah, I like that you mentioned that you were in Kenya the other day. That um, <laughs> introduces us to the next question. Right now, you are the head of sustainability at Bolt. How did you end up there, even before we talk about what the role entails? Mm, well, I've been working, as I, as I already mentioned, in the sustainability sector for a long time. Uh, my last position was also in the mobility field. Yeah. in another startup startup company in, in Spain and Latin America. And uh, well, I had the chance and the opportunity to broaden the impact of sustainability by uh, by becoming part of both team. Um, you know, also understanding that Africa was part of a, a huge part of the markets in which uh, the company operates was just amazing for me because I think there are a lot of things to do, and and uh, in Africa specifically, uh, there's amazing people doing great, great stuff. Yes. And just by a little bit more push or or focus from in other places, we can do much more there. So it was challenging, and and it was also exciting for my side to be able to also meet the needs of a new continent for me. Yeah. Um, I saw the video that um, was released, I think, on, on the Bolt platform and on the Seedballs Kenya platform. Um, mm -hmm. Besides that kind of content or that kind of activity that you're doing for Bolt, what, what does your role entail? Because when we talk about head of sustainability, mostly in an African concept, the people mm -hmm. on the streets, quote unquote, think of it as a thing that this top executive do and they give orders behind a desk and they tell people go plant trees. How, how, how would you break down that role? Okay, so first of all, uh, we are the, the first, uh, Bolt is, is the first European mobility super app. Uh, we are the main operator in, in Africa with 100 million customers in, in 45 countries and over 400 cities across Europe and, and, and Africa. So it, it's a huge impact per se, what we are driving in cities. And our mission in terms of the sustainability impact we want to cause is just simple. It's building better cities for people. And we are doing so by offering only more efficient and environmentally friendly mobility alternatives. So we can reduce the dependence, the individual dependence on, on personal cars. And also it drives us to improve quality of life because if you reduce traffic, if you are able to decrease emissions, the noise pollution, if you are able to minimize accidents, to relieve public space from the amount of cars, the huge amount of cars we have. Yeah. And, and if you are able to make transportation more accessible and affordable, in fact, you are meeting sustainability, like from both what, from, from what cities need and what the company is able to provide. Yeah. Because we believe that most trips inside the cities don't require a personal car. So we are trying to offer more alternatives and, and build the future uh, where, where people are no longer forced to buy a car to get around. Yeah. So I think if I try to explain it as simple as possible, what we are doing is that 
building the, the cities of the future by providing alternatives to stop, we call it Carmageddon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when you look at it from a partnerships perspective, uh, where you're building now sustainable cities, that is SDG 11, right? Um, how do you inform the partnerships that you reach out to or the people that you partner with, for example, Seedballs Kenya in this case? Well, uh, it was kind of a fast, fantastic uh, chance to be able to work with, with uh, Seedballs Kenya. Actually, we found them uh, on LinkedIn, so never underestimate the power of social networks. Yeah. Uh, we reached them. And we, we told Teddy, okay, Teddy, here is the need. We already know and we understand that we've, we have an environmental impact just by existing and providing the alternatives, the mobility alternatives we are providing. So if we want to do something different, invest in specific projects uh, together with you, what, what could be? done in the landscape and he told us okay so in in kenya there's a huge need um for building more more spaces for trees and uh, and, and, and grass and everything because the, the country is well below the 10 percent uh, of uh, forest landscapes that it should have for being a safe and healthy country in terms of the um, United Nations. So let's do this. Let's find um, other partners in the landscape that are already uh, working in conservation and reforestation all across the country. And then let's do something which is kind of replicate nature. So we are spreading. Uh, it's like the equivalent of 11 million uh, uh, trees all around Kenya, spreading them just indigenous seeds to, to allow them grow everywhere where a tree is missing. Yeah. So we are going to um, work in the rehabilitation of damaged uh, land, where of course natural restoration is not possible at all, or places where uh, well, where it's unlikely going to happen in the short term. So we are speeding up the process of gray greening uh, the, the, the landscape. Yeah. And um, what what is amazing is that as soon as you start searching for partners, you really realize you are not alone. So there is plenty of people there that wants to make an impact, that wants to create a real long term um, project or initiative to help their societies, their communities, their countries, and pretty much everything. So while we are not only investing in their reforestation, also we discovered there's a lot of space out there to create uh, these green collar jobs. So people mm. taking care of the environment. And that's, that's just amazing. And we'll have a real impact because it's the most sustainable approach. Yeah. The interesting bit with uh, sustainability as a concept is the moment you start addressing one thing, you realize that your impact is felt across a multitude of SDGs. Speaking of SDGs, uh, I know Bolt um, aligns with SDG 11. Was that mm -hmm. a deliberate choice? Um... In fact, aligning with the SDGs is the right thing to do. And um, from our side, uh, it was clear that if by 2050, uh, a huge percent of the population of the world, which is almost 70% of the population, will live in urban areas, which is our space. And we are talking about 370 million in Europe and 1 billion people living in cities in Africa, yeah. then we need to face the challenge in cities and we need to support them in facing like three, <coughs> three, main, um, three main goals. So first of all, we choose the SDG 13, 
because we really think that taking urgent action to, to combat uh, climate change, it's the huge opportunity we have by reducing the environmental impact of mobility yeah. inside the cities yeah. and create healthier spaces, improving the air quality I was mentioning before. Yeah. So that's the first one, the 13. Then offering affordable and safe transportation for everyone re uh, helps to reduce inequalities and ensure also equal opportunities by, by creating income uh, for, for drivers, for couriers, and for people inside the mobility sector, while also facilitating a way to move safe and, and, and affordable inside the cities. So SDG 10 is something that is also related to the way we want to impact in the cities and, and communities in which we operate. And for sure, with my words, I'm giving you also some um, tips on the next one, which is, in fact, the SDG 11. Yeah. We want to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. And uh, we are committed to helping uh, cities to be more resilient by collaborating with them to develop solutions to tackle the main mobility related issues. And that's our proposal. Yeah, if you if you look at it, where, like where you sit right now or the desk you sit at right now, uh, when you go to work every day, when you look back to what you studied and what you went to school for initially before you got into sustainability, do you see um, a, a common denominator between the two? Uh, If I if I look back uh, to what I study, uh, I don't think I was prepared to face the challenges at the at the speed that the world need now. Yeah. So I guess if I could advise something to the new generations is get involved into sustainable topics earlier, because the challenges we are facing and the ones that we are going to face in the future require another type of knowledge and skills. It's something human and we are made for, for adaptation to the new reality, but um, I would strongly suggest studying more about uh, the environment and how we can understand a little bit more about the risks of living in in, in environments with that had been so harmed and also like more human topics. Yeah. I really like the human topics. And I think there's a lot of knowledge that has to be built in that in that field too. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding, especially when it comes to the topic of sustainability. And there are a lot of misconceptions. I've had uh, quite a number of interviews, especially for this series. And I like what you're saying. Uh, when people go beyond what they studied and just start focusing on, like paying attention to what is happening with the environment, the global climate, uh, just making sure that when even the workspace that they're in, making sure that your people are taken care of. Um, like that, those are among like those are few, but among the things that we should be paying attention to. When you look at mm -hmm. this space, um, what do you what do you feel like are some of the things that need to be done? Mm, there's a, a sustainability professional I, I really admire here in Spain. I've been working with her uh, a lot, and she always says that sustainability happens even by coercion, conviction, and convenience. Yeah. And I think more of these three need to happen. So on the conviction side, we need more companies, more organizations, and more people driven by a real purpose of solving the main problems that our communities uh, faces, not, not creating bigger problems along the way. So we need more purpose-driven corporations, more social and environmental entrepreneurs, more labs, more think tanks, more 
people to help these people again and and their ideas to to success then on the convenience side uh, we as individuals we need to be empowered and more aware, more aware about uh, how we can drive a difference so if we are able to make a decision on the things the services or, or products we purchase we need to be aware that every single time we purchase or buy anything we are making a decision and we are building a future whether that future is more or less sustainable it's on us yeah. and it's on our everyday decisions and of course i'm aware that not everybody has the opportunity to choose but those who have it should support also companies entrepreneurs and and organizations providing more and more sustainable solutions and on the coercion side which i think is 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 related to uh the regulatory landscape i think there are already some steps that cities and governments are taking uh, and some commitments to foster sustainability but of course there's always more to do so defining clear goals and setting targets inside the cities inside the communities inside the countries i think will contribute more to the sustainable development we want and more importantly the sustainable development we need we need to listen more as you were mentioning we need to pay attention to uh, what surround us we need to identify problems and need, and we need to behave as real citizens in fact and get involved and and make decisions and make everyday decisions for a more sustainable future yeah the the one thing um i know is if you can think it or imagine it it can be done and the the one question that i keep asking is if you were to wake up one day as one of the SDGs, just as a new utopia <laughs> thing, a dream thing, which one would it be <laughs> and why? Well, this is a hard one because usually I'm more working in the environmental field, but from the bottom of my heart, I could really like to be the SDG 5. So achieving gender equality and empower all women and girls because i think there's still a 50% of our societies that does not have the chance to participate in the economy to to, to participate in the decisions and uh, that 50% of of the people of this planet will suffer the most of the impacts of uh, those decisions that someone else is 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 taking so from my perspective it's about fairness it's about inclusion but it's also about future and success because you can only create a successful society if everybody is considered respect and and heard and uh, there's there's a huge path uh, in front of us for for women and girls yeah if if you empower the women and the girls everyone is taken care of i remember one of the episodes i had a conversation with um, susan joroge uh, of sustain of responsible business reporting and she was saying the same thing she chose sdg5 and she was mentioning mm-hmm. how in some areas when a sustainability project like wind power is being implemented uh, people celebrate it because it's renewable energy but they forget that when this is happening the corporations that are setting up these plants uh, when they give money they're giving money to the men and the women mm-hmm. are more affected because they are the ones who use that land to cultivate and till and feed the families so i agree yes. empowered women empowered uh, young girls and girls in general uh, equals a sustainable uh, um, society uh, i want to thank you for making the time if there is one thing um, that i want to ask i know this is a bit off topic is as a platform that is establishing ourselves as a sustainability media platform what is the one thing that you would wish that we don't miss because 
you know, sometimes when you're creating this kind of content, you sort of get inside the box and just ask specific questions and you forget the impact. But from someone who's looking at it from outside in, what are some of the things that you wish this platform, that is a sustainability media platform, does not miss? If we are to really have a good I, impact. Um, I could say you cannot miss that the best way to build a sustainable future it's by the decisions you make day by day. So increasing awareness about the impact of every single decision we make should be something to cover. Providing more information on those impacts and uh, helping people to really understand that this is the only power we have. The decisions we make will, will make a, a total, total difference. And uh, I always uh, like to share a quote from Winston Churchill um, that says that now is not the end, is not even the, the beginning of the end, but it is, and in sustainability, I think it's, it's more accurate than anything else. Um, it's perhaps the end of the beginning. So if we change the way we see things, if we change the way we decide, about things we are already build, building a more sustainable path and more sustainable future for for all of us now if there's one thing that has stood out for me in this conversation is that sustainability is a universal language the practices we have back in kenya are practices that other countries in europe america asia have and it's the same reason why as a kenyan i can still have a conversation with someone in madrid and would still be saying the same thing so the call to action for me from this episode is that in our own little way, regardless of our background, let's try and have some impact. And I think if we do that, it's going to be easier to sort of reduce the impact, the negative impacts that we have. And in our own little way, we're going to leave the earth better than we found it. My name is Sebastian. Ensure to like, share and subscribe. If you're listening to this on our website, ensure to leave a comment and if you have anyone who is in sustainability space anyone in mind anyone at all that you'd like for us to have a conversation with feel free to tag us or dm us and we're going to try and reach out to them and have them on the platform mm -hmm.